Hello! In this video I will describe a simple 915 MHz wireless microphone with a range of up to 400 meters. It's small enough to fit into a common pen and it has different power settings and there are options for voice activation and a low voltage DC-DC converter too. The one shown here is the low power version powered by two small button cells. Vision of the 80s, 1984. A telescreen was sort of a two-way television set. Fine. This is the basic circuit with all the components needed to transmit. To the left we see the variable gain microphone. The output signal then goes to an operational amplifier and afterwards the signal goes through R9 to the diode D2 which is a varactor diode. The capacitance of this diode changes with the applied reverse voltage. We use an integrated circuit here, U4, contains all the circuitry to create the high frequency RF signal. R12 is used to adjust the power output and to the right we see the antenna matching components. Now this is the PCB, how it comes from the manufacturer. It is a simple double layer 0.8 mm thick PCB. The board now has to be filed down to fit into the pen or wherever you want to put it and the smallest width with this layout is 6.45 mm and it fits snugly into the pen we're going to use for this project. In order to solder some of the components we will need solder paste. Because the component pins are not accessible we deposit a small amount of solder paste on each pad. Just doing a fast forward here, otherwise it's going to take too long. Just really put a small amount. If you put too much, there could be solder bridges, especially under the integrated circuit. If there's really too much, you have to clean it completely and start over again. Now we replace all the components. They will stick to the solder paste. That's C1, the microphone, C2, the crystal X1, the Varactor diode, the transmitter integrated circuit, the resistor to select the power, C13 and C15. Then we heat the whole board on a hot plate or in an oven to about 250 degrees Celsius. The solder paste will melt and this is how it looks like once it's done. Now all the components on the bottom side have to be soldered manually. There's a jumper, the reed contact, Another jumper, and then we will tin one pad of each component, which will make it easier to place and solder the component afterwards. I'm a little shaky here. The PCB is in a mini vise on my bench. My arms are both in the air, so I don't have any support for my hands. After that we place all the components, which are U1, uh, that's the integrated circuit, I already placed it. Then there is R9, R7, C7, R6, C5, 
C11, C12, C14, L1, and don't forget L2 which I didn't show you. Now this is the assembled bottom side. Next thing is the antenna. The length, the optimum length depends a bit on what kind of batteries are used and how long the wires towards the battery are. It's about 60 to 80 millimeters. Since we want the transmitter to fit into a pen of only 6.5 millimeter diameter, we take two small button cells in series. They have a diameter of 5.8 millimeters and they should fit in. You can't see it here, but they are actually soldered together with a short wire. In order to solder on these small batteries, you need a soldering iron with a big thermal mass adjusted to high temperature and then you solder only for a very short amount of time. As we can see here, the soldering time is really short, less than a second. If it doesn't go well the first time, we wait a bit, we let the heat dissipate and then we solder again. Now here we can see the whole circuit assembled with the battery connected. The PCB could actually be cut shorter if we were not to use the read contact. The spectrum analyzer adjusted to 960 MHz. I'm gonna approach a magnet to activate the read contact and the transmitter turns on. Now we just push the batteries and the PCB into the pen and we test it again. President Nixon has had the least responsibility of any of the last few presidents for the massive program. The Olympics through the United States. It wasn't until one can talk by telephone. Bell incidentally lifted the gallows frame telephone and said this instrument, just as you see it here, was invented for purposes of about uh, 20 miles. Or that they had done it deliberately, that they had withheld the information from him so that he was 24 hours behind the time with the knowledge. But he was so incensed that he wanted...